I have made a grave error. Last week, I watched the original Descendants movie, and it has opened up a Pandora's box of Disney nostalgia that I can't shut. Some of my symptoms include breaking out into song and dance, cosplaying characters, watching D23 conference videos. Okay, if, I, if I'm being real right now, I do break out in song and dance and cosplay normally, but the Disney part, that's new. Am I becoming my worst fear? Uh, uh, Disney adult? Actually, I think I'm safe from that until I start spending $40 on Mickey Mouse ears and tattooing the magic castle on my calf. Until then, I am just a casual fan who is very excited to watch this movie. Our story starts out almost identical to the previous one with a little song and dance about being rotten to the core. Or in this case, being wicked. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, this one was a hard watch with people in the room. My face was burning from secondhand embarrassment. My favorite part of the song is when it ended, um, but actually my real favorite part of the song is the fact that they're talking about being wicked, how evil they are, and then their crimes are like harmless pranks and throwing apples. Like, babe, I think you're confused. Truly evil is, you know, like murder, torture, forcing someone to listen to Nickelback. But I love it. They're like, I'm so bad, don't mess with me. I once ate a grape in the supermarket and I didn't pay for it. Guys, I hate to say this, but that little song and dance is not convincing me. I mean, you need to cut someone's brakes, do some arson, and then maybe I'll reassess. While I wait here for some more evidence of their rottenness, it is revealed that the last number was actually a dream sequence from Mal, the daughter of Maleficent, main character, and now reformed villain kid. Now in the present time of the story, she finds herself faced with another kind of evil. The press. What do you oh, like being blonde? Is your mother still a lizard? Uh, okay, alright, excuse me. Uh, we will let you know if and when that particular situation changes. Here we meet Ben, Mal's boyfriend and 16-year-old king of Oridon. Because that's normal. He rules the country where all the Disney princesses and princes live. Mal, on the other hand, is from the Isle of the Lost, which is kind of like Alcatraz for Disney villains and their kids. Right off the bat, we see that Mal is being torn in a bunch of different directions. But hey, you know, that's just a normal part of transitioning from being a villain's kid to a king's girlfriend. We all can relate to this. Well... Well, maybe I can't. But but still, I'm sure she loves her new life. She's definitely not missing her old life of poverty and crime. You don't ever miss running wild and just breaking all the rules. Like stealing and lying and fighting? Yeah. Oh my god, Mel, what is wrong with you? I feel like her saying that is the real life equivalent of being like, oh man, I, I miss being on probation and jail stamps. Oh, times were so much simpler when I was living in a single wide and had abusive parents. But things are constantly changing for Mal's life when she learns that the cotillion dance that everyone's exciting for means something else for her relationship. I can hardly wait to see what your wedding will look like. Me too. Wait, what? The real cotillion is like getting engaged to be engaged to be engaged. Mal and Ben met six months ago. Her friends are talking about marriage? Is this Oridon prep or BYU? That is crazy. But I guess this thing is kind of the norm for Disney. I mean, when you think about it, Snow White was 14 when she married her 31 year old prince. So, I mean, at this rate, Mal is pretty much a spinster at 16 being unwed. But will she be able to maintain her relationship? Because Ben is a little overwhelming. I have a little surprise for you again wow that's like every day now <laughs> or every other day the even days because you're even more perfect than i thought oh brother even without the love potion from the first movie ben is still afflicted by the cringe and i'm starting to think he's infecting mal as well because she follows up with this dialogue you like it <gasps> ben <laughs> does an ogre like cheese puff Am I supposed to know the answer to that question? Do trolls like eating cheese puffs? Or are they severely lactose intolerant? Is there even a Disney movie where there's a troll? Or cheese puffs for that matter? Honestly, what are you referencing, girl? And my confusion, it remains when we see Jay, the son of Jafar in what I think is fencing class? <laughs> Is this even fencing? Like, I'm pretty sure they're not following the official rules at all. Like, aren't you supposed to stay in the confined circle? Okay, I'm gonna be vulnerable with you guys. All of my knowledge about fencing comes from the kids show Miraculous Ladybug, but like, hear me out, hear me out. I don't think I'm wrong here. But the guys definitely are when Lonnie, the daughter of Mulan, wants to join the team, and the guys tell her this. A team will be comprised of a captain and eight men. Jay. I'm sorry. Coach, trust me, I'm not gonna say captain if I just throw out the rule book. Oh, 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 okay, I get it. So when you actually play the sport, you don't have to follow the rules at all. But when a girl wants to join, mm, 
Then you have to become the rulebook police. Got, yeah, okay, I'm seeing the logic. Cheating is one thing, but having a female on the team, now that's unforgivable. She should have been born a man. You know, it's her fault. Okay, guys, I'm like convinced this school is secretly BYU. Well, I investigate that. Carlos is digging up some information on the internet about how to get Jane, the fairy godmother's daughter, to be his girlfriend. How to get out of the friend zone. Okay, Carlos was so real for that one, but he doesn't even get to see the results because Mal comes in so stressed from having to be a good person. Carlos, don't you ever miss screaming at people and just making them run away from you? Why does this sound like something Shrek would say? I think Mal needs to get herself a management job at Chili's and this way she can yell at everyone she wants. Or better yet, just get a bob haircut and chunky highlights and ask to speak to the manager. While Mal struggles with not being able to express herself, we travel back to the Isle of the Lost where we meet the new villains. And they're not so pleased that Mal is over there thriving while they suffer. Harry, that's her turf now. And I want it too. We should not be getting our leftovers. Son of Hook, son of Gaston, and me, most of all, daughter of Ursula. Okay, I get the anger, right? Like, why didn't they get this cushy life and we don't? But what I do not get is this musical number. You know what they say, but I don't have all the fun. Never learned how to come because I'm number one. Uh, okay, work, I think. Ready to become, we always get our way. It's the part life, every single day. Harry Hook looks like he's lip syncing for his life in the elimination round of RuPaul's Drag Race. But you know, I'm sure it can't get any more chaotic than that. I don't even know where to look. My eyes are being assaulted with movement and they didn't make the music loud enough so you can hear all of the creaks and the squeaks. Filming this live probably sounds like that episode of SpongeBob where he gets the squeaky shoes and he won't take them off. But fortunately the musical number ends, we get a little break from the chaos and we head back over to Oradon where Mal and Ben are having a little picnic date. You can't take me anywhere, right? <laughs> oh, um, actually, take me back to the villain's island. I I'm uncomfortable. This is the same energy of like a first date after he casually reveals that his ex was his cousin. Like, it's very awkward right now. And things somehow get even more uncomfortable when Ben finds out that Mal is still using her spell book. Speed reading spell, blonde hair spell, cooking spell. And I was giving you props for fitting in so well for doing your best. These are so harmless. Okay, so she used some magic to make herself look presentable for you, to make you your favorite food. Nobody tell Ben about makeup or wigs. It'll blow his mind. Ben seems like the kind of guy to get upset if you told him that you made him a Trader Joe's frozen meal. He'd be like, what do you mean you didn't make this sweet potato gnocchi from scratch? My servants would never. I, I can't even look at you right now. Dude, chill, it's not that big of a deal. Mal's upset, so she shows him that the entire thing that she had made him was just a PB&J, and rightfully so, she walks her butt out. No. No, no. Peanut butter and jelly is my favorite. Oh, man, I can't take you seriously right now. This actually might be my favorite line from the movie. Peanut butter and jelly is my favorite. He says that with so much passion. Ben just really knows what an overworked, disgruntled girlfriend wants to hear. And Mal knows she never wants to see him again. She heads back to the Isle of the Lost. Honestly, I'm with Mal here. That peanut butter and jelly line really scared me. I would need a vacation too to reflect on my life choices. However, Ben immediately reflects when he gets a breakup note from Mal. This is my fault. This is my fault. I, I blew it. She'd been under so much pressure lately, and instead of being understanding, I just went all beast on her. I have to go there and apologize. Okay, Ben, you're back in my good graces. You may have your faults. You make some puns that I don't particularly like. Your interactions with Mal make me want to shrivel up and hide from the cringe. But you know what? You admit your mistakes, and you apologize. And that's a green flag. There is no way that someone's not gonna see him and Mal's friends going across a golden bridge in a limo. How is this a secret mission? It's like the same as if he shot fireworks from his car. Everyone knows you're there, dude. And if that's not bad enough, his self-awareness is almost somehow worse when it comes to his street smarts. Hey, uh, ben, hey, stop, man. just stop. Why? This isn't a parade, it's the aisle. Dude, in what universe does it make sense to strike up a conversation with a complete stranger by going over and asking for a handshake? This isn't a political rally. Bro thinks that he's JFK. But fortunately for white boy Ben, the villains have more experience in this arena and they teach him how to fit in. Like, really wanna be that a lot, and I'm giving it my best 
shot. Oh, oh God, that's a really bad lyric. I wanna, I wanna know the person who wrote that, who got paid to write that. Ben is really traumatizing me right now with the rapping, but surely it can't get worse. Oh yeah, I think I got this. Let's go, I'm ready to rock this. And I ain't gonna thank you for your help. Oh, and it did. I'm ready to rock this? Ben, the only thing you're ready to rock is Sweet Caroline at a church karaoke night. There is no way that Ben doesn't get beat up on this island. Oh, you can uh, Ben. Okay. Uh, the song just ended and immediately someone recognized him. Literally took like five seconds. But I mean, you didn't need to be a fortune teller to see that one coming. But who cares if he gets beat up? Because if he makes it with Mal, this whole trip is worth it. I have to take myself out of the picture because it's what's best for you and it's what's best for Orda. Oh, sucks to suck, dude. But you know, here's the thing. What did you think was gonna happen? Mel ran back to her crime-stricken neighborhood to get rid of you. Did you really think it was gonna be that easy? Apparently he did, because he sad boy struts away and immediately gets taken by pirates. What did you do with Ben? Oh, and uh, we naked him. Mm-hmm, yeah. And if you want to see him again, uh, Mel, come to the chip shop tonight. Hey! I want to know how high the bills are for this actor to be doing that much. He's like seducing everyone by also scaring them. But if I'm being real right now, that would work on me. I would join the pirates immediately. But Mal and the gang are not doing that anytime soon. So Mal goes to find Uma, daughter of Ursula, to try and get Ben back. I'm back. I'm back with seven belts. Why is Disney so obsessed with accessories? Like I swear every show I've ever seen, it's like, okay, we need to put them in a fedora and a scarf. No, 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 no. we need to put knee high socks and, and three pairs of boots on them like Disney. It's enough slices. I'm convinced that Walt Disney wrote in his mission statement for the business that here at Disney, we believe in trust, pixie dust, and seven belts at all times. Fashion faux pas aside, Mal has to beat Uma and get her man back through a high stakes action game of rock, paper, scissors. And you can slap a pirate hat on, but you're still shrimpy. <laughs> Somehow the smack talk is less intimidating than the game of rock, paper, scissors. If you really want to hurt her, you gotta mention the fact that she's wearing seven belts. That right there is roasting gold. Or maybe mention the fact that she's got that new life, new me, identity crisis, I just went through a breakup bangs. I mean, come on. The cliche is right there. Either way, Mal loses and has to promise Uma that she's gonna bring her the fairy godmother's wand, which is a magical tool that'll help her get off the Isle of the Lost. So of course, in order to save Ben, Mal goes back to Oridon to get the- Um, no, actually she makes a pit stop first to sing a feel-good friendship song with Evie. Now Ben is being tortured by villains and Evie and Mal are just smiling, singing a little feel good, heartfelt song. Guys, I hate to break up the love fest, but your man is tied to a post right now waiting for you to save him. Like, let's have a little urgency. While Mal and Evie could care less about Ben apparently, Carlos and Jay are in Ordon right now printing a magic wand that they are going to bring back to Uma, but ooh, they do run into a problem. I'm coming with you guys. <laughs> we don't need swords at the Waffle Hut. You're going to the aisle to rescue Ben. Look, it's either you take me or I'm gonna have to tell Fairy Godmother. Why is she so excited to go into battle? Like that is a very Oridon prep of her to be like, yes, I get to kill people so fun. I love being a hero. Like babe, these swords don't have a soft tip on them. If you get sliced, you lose a limb. But honestly, that's probably exciting for her too. Now I call this next part of the movie. This rescue scene is way too long and nothing really happens. So here are the highlights. I said feel be like hang now, eh? Even Ben, the king of cringe, was like, dude, you gotta rein it in. You're embarrassing yourself. And if you thought that was a hard watch, it gets worse. Don't try to intimidate. Your bark is much worse than your bite. Who's the baddest of them all? I guess we're finding out tonight. Ooh, I'm so scared. This rap battle is really shivering me timbers. I really wish that there was a knight who could just rap a verse and stop all this. Hey, we don't have to choose. We don't have to light the fuse. Yeah, you tell them, Ben. Of course they're gonna listen to you. They love their king who does so much for them. Okay, is it just me? Or is Ben's little solo like hardcore giving in High School Musical 3, Now or Never song when Gabriella comes out and sings to Troy? Oh, you can do it, just know that I 
After a long 10 minutes of weak sword fighting, Mal and the gang escape with Ben. But despite going through a 10 minute long dance number with swords and fighting for Ben, she's still not sure if she wants to stay in Ordon or not. I was, you know, stealing candy from babies and now everybody wants me to be this lady of the court and I have no idea how to keep up the act. Ugh, girl, I thought we were over this. Why are we romanticizing our past of harassing children? This is like the equivalent when white women are like, oh my God, I wish I could go back to the 1950s. Things were just so great then. Uh, babe, you couldn't use a credit card uh, and your husband would probably hit you. Okay, yeah, there was poodle skirts and milkshakes, but there was also racism. Like, let's look at the big picture here, which fortunately Mal sees because she decides to go to Cotillion and get her man back. But someone else got to him first. Oops, well, you waited too long. Obviously, he has a type. He likes the bad girls and you just saved him from death. Like, rookie mistake. Okay, but obviously it is so apparent that he is spelled by Uma right now, and I want to know why no one is stepping in to have a little chat with him. Like, his parents are standing right there, and they're like, oh my god, this is so sad. Like, babe, you know, you know that this isn't your son. Do something. It's so obvious he's hexed. He proposes to Uma after meeting her two days ago. Okay, wait, <laughs> maybe Ordon Prep is Mormon and I just don't know. But this doesn't last for long because if you've watched any Disney movie, you know the best way to break a spell is with a little smooch. True love's kiss. Works every time. Aw, cute. Well, I guess that's the end. Oh my God, is that a giant squid? Mal turns into a dragon, Uma is a giant squid, this movie is turning into King Kong versus Godzilla. But if there's one person who can stop this madness, I think we all know that it's the fairy Godma- <laughs> Or Ben, again, the least qualified person to break up this feud. Just once, I wanna know what it's like to have the confidence of Ben. I mean, growing up as a royal must do wonders for your self-esteem. It's got to stop, this isn't the answer. The fighting has got to stop. Nobody wins this way. We have to listen and respect each other. Oh, oh my God, the editing in this movie is killing me. When I look at Mal, I feel like she's giving, you know, 1980s fantasy animation. And then Uma looks like she's using the green screen feature on a MacBook. I don't know what's going on, but Ben somehow manages to get them to kiss and make up. And then somehow when Mal turns back into a human, she has a different dress and hairstyle. Listen, I'm not an expert on magic, but in my narrow knowledge, I'm pretty sure your clothes would rip off as you turn into a giant dragon. And when you transform back, you'd be butt naked. But you know what, who cares? Because now it's the ending of the movie and it's time for another generic pop song and dance. We gotta be bold, we gotta be brave, we gotta be free. I love that everyone here has a second dress to change into that is almost identical to their first. Like, I want to know what it said on this invite. Cotillion dress code. In the event of a natural disaster or sea creature throwing water onto the ship, just make sure you bring a cocktail dress to change into. Okay, thanks. I honestly don't understand how we went from fighting in the ocean to this happy ending. Like, Uma should have put up more of a fight. It's whatever. You know why? Because this is a Disney movie and everything has to end happy. Final thoughts. This movie felt like someone took the outline of the original and just changed a couple things. It's essentially the same conflict of Mal wanting to be good, but then also wanting to be bad, but then instead of having Maleficent as the villain, we add an Uma instead. They definitely got a bigger budget on this one than the first, but all of the locations still felt like sets. Like, you couldn't tell me that they didn't go to Disney World and film this in Ariel's Grotto. I think the songs are better in this one than the first, chillin' like a villain. That one is a bop. It's a bop, what I gotta say? I felt like the conflict at the end was resolved way too easily. Like I actually would have enjoyed if Ben didn't release from Uma's spell and maybe that was a cliffhanger and that's what we were preparing for in the next one. But if that's what happened, then we couldn't end the movie with the generic pop song and dance and that would just be a downright crime. Overall, I had a great time watching this movie. I was laughing the whole way through, singing along. As the second movie goes, I was satisfied. Well, that's all I got for you. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and comment what movie you want me to watch next. Bye.